Hey, I'm Joe Fortune. Welcome to Mind Up. As we're recording this, Hurricane Dorian is moving along the coast of Florida right now. So what better time to start a new project? Today I'm going to show you how to make a wind speed sensor, or the fancy word is an anemometer, out of household parts. So this is the actual wind sensor. This is nothing more than a PC fan. Just a standard fan that you tear out of your PC. This one's got three wires. It doesn't have to be three wires. We're only using the positive and the ground lead. So if you got that third one, don't worry about it. We're not going to use it. So what we got here is wooden dowels from a craft store. The cups are actually made from ping pong balls that I cut in half with a razor blade. And then there's a spacer in here just to keep the dowels a little bit up above. And that spacer is the lid to a soda bottle. The reason I got that, I got it so low is the last version I had was up high on another dowel and the, the shear of the hurricane actually ripped it off. So I kept it very low. That way it wouldn't be easy to tear off of there. And when you go to glue the things on there, it helps to take sandpaper or razor blade and score it, rough up the edges, because initially the, the Coke bottle lid wouldn't even stick to this. So I had to rough everything up, scratch everything up to give the, the, uh, the, the glue a nice surface to bond to. Okay, let's see how this works. So I've got the oscilloscope hooked up here. I've got the positive hooked up to the red wire and the ground hooked up to the black wire. And let's just start to spin and see what happens. See that? It's actually forming an alternating current. It's forming an alternating current because a, a motor, when you spin it, is nothing but a generator in reverse. So it's generating an alternating current. And watch this. As we spin faster, see the, the peak of the wave, which is called the amplitude. The faster we go, the higher the peak is. The faster we spin the fan, the higher the peak is. That means the faster we spin the fan, the higher the voltage is. Now we've got a way to compare it to wind speed. The faster the fan, the higher the voltage we're gonna get. Now we just need a way to convert that voltage into miles per hour, which we're gonna deal with later. But first we have to deal with how are we gonna, how are we gonna figure out what is, how is the Arduino gonna know what is the peak amplitude here for our voltage? The issue is if we've got this alternating current, how do we read it into the Arduino? Well, we've got the analog read function, but the problem is, let's say we do an analog read, we have no idea where we're gonna be at in the timeline of this wave. We could end up just right here. Let's say, let's say this thing reaches a maximum of just five volt, hypothetically. So we do this analog read, and now all of a sudden we've just read, what was it, maybe like 1.2 volts or something. But that's not the peak. That didn't give us the peak. That didn't give us what we wanted. So what we have to do is what's called sampling. We have to take samples all along this frequently. So we'll take an analog read here, 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 here. And eventually, if we take the samples frequently enough, we're going to end up with one that's at the peak. And all we have to do to find the peak is just compare all these samples together. We just keep track of which one was the highest one, and bam, we've got our peak amplitude. If we take enough samples, eventually we're going to land on the peak. And fortunately, with the wind speed and the gusts, the fan is going to be spinning fairly consistently for a few cycles, at least as far as, you know, milliseconds go. Okay, so now I've got the fan hooked up to the Arduino. I got the positive lead going into A0, analog zero, because that's going to be the pin doing the analog read. And I got a little test sketch here. And what the sketch does is it takes samples for five seconds and at the end of five seconds it prints out to the serial monitor what the highest sample was over that period so let's see if it works okay let me open the serial monitor i got everything hooked up okay so we should get really low readings if not zero because i'm not moving the fan yeah so we got a three we'll be able to take another one okay so i'm going to start to spin the fan slowly as i spin it slowly we can see now we got an 18 23, 18. Okay, now I'm gonna spin a little bit faster. Now we're up to 30, 38. Okay, now I'm gonna spin it really fast. 109, 175, see if I go faster. 186. So you see it's working. The faster I spin the fan, the highest reading I get. So we got it, we got a wind measure. Now the only thing we got left to do is to figure out, okay, well, how do we convert this into miles per hour or something that's useful for us? Let's do some math. We gotta figure out how to convert the analog reading into a voltage. The analog reading, remember, is a reading from zero to 1024, where 1024 would be the complete five volts, but we're not even gonna deal with volts in this. We're just gonna use the analog reading directly for the conversion. So um, to calibrate this, what I did is I had my wife drive me down the street and I held the fan out the window as she was doing 25 miles per hour. 
and the reading I got from analog read was 230. So let's let's write this as a data point. So the analog reading was 230 at a speed of 25 miles per hour. And I'm putting miles per hour on this side because when I make this equation, I want analog reading to map to miles per hour. And then what's another reading? Well, we know obviously that if I'm if the analog reading is zero, that should mean we're standing still because the fan's not moving. So zero, zero. Analog reading is zero means zero miles per hour. Okay, so now that we know this, let's find the slope between these two. So remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll call this x1, y1, x2, y2. Like that. Remember all that from math class? That's okay, because I'm going to show you anyway. Okay, so our slope then is 25 minus 0 over 230 minus 0, which is really just 25 divided by 230, which came out to uh, 0 0.109 roughly. I should make that the approximate symbol here. Approximately 0 0.109. So now that we got the slope, we can actually make the equation of the line. Remember y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Remember this from algebra? That's to actually build the equation of a line using either of the data points. So obviously that data point is the easiest one to use, so we'll use that. y minus 0 equals our slope 0 0.109 times x minus 0, which is really just y minus 0 is y. Um, x minus 0 is just x, so that's 0.109x. Pretty straightforward. Doing this whole process may have been a little bit overkill to get this, but I think it's a good example to show you how math comes into play, and in case it didn't pass through the origin nice and neatly like this, it shows you the kind of the process to derive your own equations when you're dealing with this, these conversions. So that's our equation. So for now on, when we take analog readings, we're going to multiply that reading by 0 0.109, and that's going to give us miles per hour. Okay, so I'm going to look over the code here. Um, the way this sketch is going to work is that um, every five minutes, it's basically going to take note in the EEPROM, it's going to record in the EEPROM, what the highest gust was for that period. And my period here is going to be five minutes. And so this, this sketch kind of has two processes going on at the same time. So we have the main loop, which is going to be constantly taking analog readings and storing whichever was the highest one over that period. And then we're also going to have an interrupt that um, gets called every second. And when the interrupt gets called, it takes whatever that highest reading was and stores it in the EEPROM memory. So starting off here, we've got the EEPROM. We include that. We have our customizable parameters. I've got the period time set up for 300 seconds, which is, equates to 5 minutes. The fan sample rate is 10. That's, about, that's 10 times a second, which was, uh, seemed to work pretty well on the demonstration we did earlier. And I, for the fan pen, I'm using analog zero, A0. These are the global variables. This is going to store whatever the highest wind speed was over that period. The seconds are how many seconds that have accumulated within that period. That's how we know when to reset the period. And the prom address is just our index into the um, EEPROM array where we're storing. If you don't know what EEPROM is, EEPROM is the permanent storage. So even if the Arduino turns off, it's saved in there and we can retrieve it later. So our first function here is the timer one initializing function. I got this, I used this website right here, this calculator, and it sets all these registers. This, don't, don't let this scare you because most of the stuff we do in Arduino doesn't look like this. If you want a really in-depth view on how to set up registers and stuff like this, a great book is called Make AVR and it explains all this. It really goes into the bare bones um, AVR programming. Uh, the AVR or the, um, the AT Mega is the chip that sits on top of the Arduino. So that's, that's what this is. This is kind of like raw programming for that chip. So this initializes the timer. Don't get too caught up on that. I use this. So I use that little calculator website to come up with it. And what this does is this tells the timer to fire once a second. When the timer fires once a second, it comes down here and it calls this function. This is called the interrupt vector. This gets called every second. And basically what it does is it checks to see, hey, is the number of seconds past the period? So has, in other words, has it been five minutes? If so, go ahead and store that highest. Um, go ahead and store that highest value, which we're going to see down below. It also prints it out so you can test it in the serial monitor. But it uh, 
EU prom writes, it stores whatever the highest value was in EU prom memory. Let's come down to setup. So in the very beginning, we turn on our serial and the timer went in it. That's this function that just says to, hey, just go ahead and go ahead and set up that timer. And this is our main loop, and this is all it is. It, it basically just takes a reading. It reads from the um, from the fan pen, gets an analog reading from it, and says, hey, if this reading is higher than the previous highest reading, go ahead and make this the highest reading. And then it delays by our sample rate. That's it. So this loop just keeps reading and reading and reading until up here when the interrupt vector is called, and then it stores whatever the highest value is. That's it. This is a, this is a pretty simple sketch uh, minus this monstrosity here but I think that's going to give you a pretty good overview for how it works. And that's that's it. That's how this whole fan works. Um, to retrieve, just so you know, since it's stored in EEPROM memory, um, to retrieve it, you can go to Examples. Let's see, where's EEPROM? EEPROM right here. And they've got one called EEPROM Read. And what this does is when you upload it to the Arduino and then you um, open the serial monitor, it goes through and lists all the numbers stored in the EEPROM memory. This one I should point this out too. I don't have this one set up for the conversion to um, miles per hour, but we can add that in real quick. If you want to store it in miles per hour, we'll say, uh, let's see, let's see. We'll come up with, um, make an integer miles per hour, and we'll have it, um, let's see, it was 1.09, or I'm sorry, 0 0.109 times whatever the highest value was. That gives us miles per hour. Then we can print instead of let's print miles per hour and write miles per hour prom. If you want it like this, instead of just the raw analog reading, I should do it. Let's see. This is an integer, and this is going to be a float, so this should get truncated. Yeah, whatever this is will get truncated to an integer because we want to store an integer. We don't. I don't need that much precision. I don't need a float. Okay, so that's it. That's it. And um, that's how it all works. And if you have any questions or um, you want to see this code, I'm going to upload it and put the link on. And uh, feel free to email me if you got any questions or see anything wrong or just let me know. And good luck on your projects.